Mystery is my hobby. Ladies and gentlemen, Barton Drake speaking. For tonight's drama, I select a case history number 114 from my book, Mystery is My Hobby. I call it Bullets Make Holes. Like I was telling you before, this fellow Ronald the Razor, we called him the Razor because that's what he mostly used to commit his crime. Take a razor and slit your throat from hairline to hairline, just as slick as a feller skin in a catfish. Well, sir, this fellow, Ronald the Razor, escaped from the pen last week, and I got a hunch he's heading straight for this lodge. Probably cross the Pierre Marquette on the bridge below Walhalla, then sneak up along the south bank. They caught him here, you know. Started slitting throats beginning with cabin number one and worked his way up to number six, doing a neat job in all of them. Never would have caught him in number six, only his razor got dull and he had to stop and stop it on the bedpost. Barton Drake snapped shut the box of fishing flies that he'd been fondly examining and preparing for the steelhead run that was to start on the Pierre Marquette tomorrow. Slowly he rose from his chair and walked over to the fireplace where he stretched his long bones in front of its cheerful warmth. For well, there was still a trace of snow on the old Pierre Marquette. Slyly, he winked at Inspector Noah Danton as old Charlie Ames, the lodgekeeper, concluded his gory tale. When the inspector dropped his can of worms, then what was that? Shots, Inspector. Pistol shots. Somebody screamed. Holy pickle peanuts! Them shots—they come from cabin number six. And now back to Glenn Langan for the second act of Mystery is My Hobby. There. That's Kevin, sir. Yes. Over there. No light, John. No, they are. there they go. They're on now. Hurry up, Inspector. I ain't as young as I used to be. I can't tell you. Here we are. Let it slow down to a walk. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Blood, horrible. What's going on in here? It's in blood. Who is this man, Charlie? Steve Morgan comes here every year to fish. Him and his pal, Max Warner. Mm -hmm. Holy buckets of buttermilk. There's Max there on the floor. Take that gun away from him, Inspector. You bet. Hey, you, give me that. Uh, what, what, what I get? Gun. Give it here. Yes, yeah, yes, take it. Blood, horrible. Hey, this fellow Warner's a mess. Yes. Yeah. The shot went through his jugular vein. Had accounts for so much blood. Forty-five automatic parts. Yes, and forty-five is always make the gold. Max, not Max. Couldn't have been Max. What's the matter with him, Bart? Not I hardly think so, Inspector. More likely a state of shock. Come on, fellow. Snap out of it. Snap out of it. Snap out of it. Snap out of it. I could do this for you, but I... No, no, no. What? Don't. Well, that you've got to come to. Morgan. What? Ah, Morgan. What? What happened? That's what we want you to tell us. I don't know. Did you shoot this this friend of yours, Max Warner? Shoot him? Yes. I don't know. Well, yes, I shot him. I must have shot him. I wear that blood. I can't stand blood. We'll get up together, man. I'm sorry. This has been an awful shock. Yes, sir. I shot Max. But I didn't know it was him. Yeah? Just who did you think it was? I don't know. Stop saying that. I went to bed early. I wanted to get an early start fishing in the morning. Something woke me up, a noise, I guess. It's not like somebody raising a window. I knew somebody was in the cabin. I lay here scared to death thinking of that, that Ronald the Razor that Charlie Ames has been talking about for the past two days. Ronald the Razor? Well, you didn't believe that yarn, did you? That's just a tall tale I tell to keep you guys interested. Holy barrels of bullfrog. Well, it's been a fine time to tell me. Go on, sir. Well, as I was lying there, I heard this fellow moving around. I reached under my pillow where I always keep my gun. And I saw him outline in front of that window over there. This one? Yeah, it's the big one. And then? Oh, it was panicky, I guess. I pulled the trigger and he dropped. Yeah? But we heard seven shots. 
I know. I was excited. I guess I did plan some more probably empty gun. Can't you do something with the fight? It's making me sick. Throw a blanket over, will you, Simon? Yep, but I'll charge the laundry bill to Morgan here. Then your shooting of Max was apparently an accident, is it? See? Yeah, he's right, Bart. There's seven bullet holes in the floor here. And you'll claim self-defense, I suppose, that you shot at a prowler thinking he was somebody else. Well, of course, Mr. Drake. My Max was my best friend. We've been friends for years. In fact, we've had many business deals together. A stranger friend who sneak into your cabin, isn't it, Morgan? Yes, sir. I can hardly believe it. I thought he was kidding. Kidding? Kidding about what? Well, you see, Max and I are both numismatists. Numismatists? No, what is the hell? Coin collectors, Inspector. No. Well, I had a coin that Max wanted, and I was showing it to him earlier in the evening. Max tried to get me to sell it to him, but I refused. And that made him angry? You know, he just laughs, and I'd better watch out, or someday I'd find it missing. Mm-hmm. Then you think perhaps he came back here tonight and tried to steal it, huh? My mother, that's the only answer. Oh, you should have known he was that serious. I'd have gladly given it to him. Holy cranberry cakes. I just thought of something. Yes, fella. Max is why. Somebody ought to tell her. Yes, I have to think somebody should. Well, he was living in Captain Finn. Inspector, do you want... Just a minute, Inspector. Somebody's coming. Gee, you did not come over here. Oh. Good evening, Mrs. Warner. How do you do, Mr. Drake? What is all this, a cranberry? You know, something terrible is that. What's the matter? Did Brown Copper go down? Your husband was shot, Mr. Warner. Shot? Max, where is he? Under that blanket. You? Yes. I'm sorry to have to tell you this. You're but... sorry? What are you sorry for? I'm glad he's dead, the loud. Ah, it's a beautiful morning, Inspector. It's a shame that last night's events will have to interfere with our fishing. Yeah, me with all those nice fat worms, too. <laughs> I don't see why we don't forget the whole thing and let the sheriff handle it. Looks like an accident to me. Yes, on the face of it, I'll have to admit it does. Well, there are a couple of things that don't jive, and I won't be satisfied until they do. Okay, Sherlock, what do you want me to do? I want you to take the station wagon and drive into Ludington. That's about 45 miles in the nearest town where you'll find a telegraph office. Well, if you just want to send the wire, why don't you fold it in? There might be too many people listening. There's an extension in every cabin, you know. Besides, this station wagon is the only means of transportation here at the lodge. Well, it's gone. It'll keep all the uh, interested parties close to home. Okay. Where do you want me to wire? Wire the stock exchange in New York. I want to know whether brown copper is up or down. Let's walk around here by cabin six, Charlie. Huh? What for? Something Steve Morgan said last night bothered me. He said he thought he heard a window open. Yeah, that's what he said. Now, this big window here, this is the one Max said he was standing in front of when he was shot. Steve said he made a perfect target. Would have, I guess. Anyway, he's head and shoulders. He couldn't open that window, though. Why not? It don't open. Nailed in there, solid as a tombstone. I'm saying. Hmm. How about these? I want to hear the same. They'll open. Uh, uh, that's a shot. I'm looking for the I don't see none. No. The ground is soft, too. If anyone had tried to open these windows from the outside, there'd be plenty of them. Hey, let's go around back. Ain't no windows there, nothing but the back door. Let's go around there anyway. You know, Charlie, it's a funny thing. What is? Why, well, anyone would take the trouble to come in through the window when the door was unlocked all the time. It was? Of course. Don't you remember last night when we heard the shots? We ran over here and walked right in. Oh, it... well, now, ain't that a pretty picture? Oh, sir. Hello there, Drake. It depends on what you call pretty. <laughs> I, 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 I was just consoling Jill Rather fervently, don't you think, Morgan? Oh, well, it's been an awful shock to her and... Uh... Oh, no. Uh, Steve, why don't you tell him the truth? You'll find it out anyway. Well, uh, 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 Steve and I are in love, Mr. Drake. There's nothing any of you can do about it. Well, I'm sure I wouldn't care to. That little accident last night seemed to clear things up tremendously, didn't it? Yes, there was a lot of things. Tell me, Mrs. Warner, did your husband know that you and Steve were carrying on a love affair? Of course he didn't know. Steve and I were too clever for that. I'm beginning to wonder if you were quite clever enough. What do you mean by that? I'm not sure that I know. Yes. Don't get any funny ideas that the shooting wasn't an accident. The sheriff gave me a clean bill of goods last night when he came to get the body. Well, I'm not disputing the accident theory. Yet? Just stop saying that yet. Sorry, I didn't get you. Just shooting in the dark. 
Yes, something like you did last night, eh, Steve? Why, you... You fiend! Oh, I'm sorry, Joe, but this guy gets my go. You lose your head. That's just what he's trying to do. Well, now, Mr. Drake, when is that policeman friend of yours coming back? Oh. Steve and I want to use the station wagon. He'll be here almost any moment, I suppose. What do you want to use it for? You want to go into Ludington and get married. Holy bales of bananas, and your husband's body ain't even cold yet. What's the difference? There's no reason to kid anybody. I'm inclined to believe you're right. You'd better get married right away. That is, if you ever expect to get married at all. And now, back to Glenn Langan for the third act of... Mystery is my hobby. Well, Inspector, am I glad to see you back. I haven't had to wait a while at the telegraph office for an answer. What did you find out? Brown copper is down, brother. And I mean down. Uh, down, eh? The very bottom. Well, come on, Inspector, tell me. I know you well enough to know that you'd find out why it was down. Well, burned it this way. You see, this fellow that was killed last night, this Max Warner and his pal Steve Morgan, had a corner on that stock. Yesterday, this Steve Morgan wired his broker to unload his entire interest. He did. Sold it a big profit and broke the market. But Max didn't unload his stock. No, Steve left him holding the bag. Must have wiped the guy out. Well, this is really beginning to stack up, isn't it? Well, I don't see how. If Steve pulled a dirty trick like that on Max, then Max would have been the one who would have been gunning for Steve, not the other way around, the way it happened. Well, that could have been it, Inspector. I get it. Max finds out that his pal has sold him out and sneaks over to Steve's cabin at Geneva. Uh-huh. Steve sees him prowling around in the dark, thinks he's a thief, and shoots him. Right. Well, anyway, you figure it, it still comes out the same. You can't spin a murder rap on Steve. And it seemed to be it, Inspector. If Max had received any word of what Steve has done. Hmm. I wonder. Oh, Charlie. Charlie Ames. Yeah? Will you come over here a minute, please? What do you want, Drake? Charlie. Max Warner was here at the lodge all day yesterday, wasn't he? Yes, he was. You'd know if he made any long-distance calls, wouldn't you, Charlie? Yes, all long-distance calls has to be okayed by me personally. That's what I thought. Did Max make any or receive any yesterday? Nope. Holy piles of pancakes. What are you getting at? Did he receive any wires? Nope. Nary a one. <laughs> well, what do you think of your theory now, Inspector? Apparently, poor Max never learned that he'd been double cross. Which puts us right back where we started from. Well, well, at least the poor guy died happy. Hmm. Oh, you'd better go in and get your lunch, Inspector. We all had hours an hour ago. Yeah? What are you going to do? I'm going over and have another chat with the occupant of cabin number six. Hello there. Anybody home? I'm right in, Mrs. Ray. Oh, it's you, Mrs. Warner. I rather expected to find Steve. Steve's out getting the station wagon. They're going into town to get married, remember? Now, I hate to be a party to the curtailment of such sweet happenings, but I'm afraid, my dear Mrs. Warner, you're not going anyplace. Who's going to stop me? I am. You and who else? <laughs> now, really, Mrs. Warner, you can do better than that such a trite little place. What's the matter with you? What have you got against Steve and my getting married? Well, nothing. Nothing at all. Only I'm not sure that Steve knows what he's getting into. The nasty remark. Yes, I know. And I also know a nastier one. A little thing called murder. Don't make me laugh. You couldn't prove my husband's death wasn't the result of an accident. I can only prove it was murder now, but I knew it was murder from the very first. How did you know? You tell me. Well, suppose it was murder. I mean, I mean, even if it was, that has nothing to do with me. I didn't shoot Max, it was Steve. <laughs> You're such a refreshing young lady, Mrs. Warner. Starting to turn on your lover already, isn't it? Well, I'm not going to a chair for something he did. I'm afraid you are, my dear girl. There's such a thing as an accomplice. That also can carry the death penalty, you know. Now, will you come along peacefully, or shall we go to meet your paramour, or do I have to use force? I'm not going anywhere. I think you are. Does this look like it? Yes, sir. Another automatic. You and Steve must have brought out an arsenal. And I'm a better shot than Steve, Mr. Drake. I wouldn't advise you to make any false moves. 
Well, uh, certainly you don't expect me to just uh, keep on standing here. No. You're going to get in that closet, and you're going to stay there till Steve and I can make our escape. Uh, really, I don't believe I care to. I'm out in that closet rather stuffy. Get in there, Mr. Drake, or I'll shoot. I don't believe you would, Mrs. Warner. Just try me and see. I'm coming after that gun. Yes, I believe you would. Now get in that closet quick. All right, all right. And don't try to break out, at least not until after we're gone. If you do, next time I'll think to kill. <laughs> well, as good old Charlie Ames would say, holy miles of mustard. There they go. Happy bride and groom. Uh, I hope the good inspector heard that shot. There's nothing like a shot to make him come a-running. I guess I could bust out of here at that. Oh, the place is too small. I can't get a run for it. Uh, Charlie's got staunch cabins, good solid oak. And that lock's no easy mark either. Hey, Bart. Bart. There's no team over. Bart, where are you? Are you all right? In here, Inspector. Where? In the closet? Yes, unlock the door, will you? I uh, can't. There ain't any key. Then shoot out the lock. Hurry. Okay. Keep your shirt on and stand out of the way. Go ahead. For that, holy gallons of gula. <laughs> Charlie, those fathers of yours weren't built for comfort. I heard the shot while I was eating my pie. Charlie and I rushed out just in time to see our friend Steve drive up at the cabin in the station wagon, and his girlfriend come running out. She gets in, and they drive away like mad. What's up? Mrs. Warner, the little vixen, stuffs me in the clothes closet like an old stuffed shirt. What? You let a dame? Oh, God. Oh, now, listen, oh, listen. It isn't funny, oh. Inspector, when you're looking into the open end of a forty-five. Yeah. You mean it was the gal that took a shot at you? Well, she pointed something at me and it went bang. I don't believe it was her finger. Holy cases of candle. Don't mind that now. Which way does they go? Turned right up on the road. Probably crossing the West Bridge. That'll take them right into Lettington. No, no. They won't go to Lettington. They'll realize that all we'd have to do to catch them would be to telephone the sheriff there. What other way could they go, Charlie? Well, now, let's see. After they get across the bridge, and that's about two miles down the road, uh -huh. they could double back and go east. There ain't another town that way for 60 miles. You mean they'd have to come back this way? Only on the other side of the river? Yes, I guess they would. Bart, if we only had another car, we could maybe catch them. That is, if we had a bridge up here to get across the river. Yes, but we haven't got a car, and there isn't a bridge. You'll have to think of something better than that, Inspector. Say, I got an amphibious jeep. Bought it in surplus sales. Use it for fishing. Why, it'd cross the river like a duck. Well, what are we waiting? Waiting for. Come on. Hey, this is all right, eh, Bart? It'll have to do, Inspector. You better hold on. We're going into the river. This is for me, Bart. I'm going to buy me one of these things. The current's taking us downstream, Charlie. All right. We'll come out right about here. And look at them come. Uh, Holy cow, they must be doing around 80. Wait here. I'm going to try and wave some hey, Mark, Mark, come back here. Mark! Mark! Stop! Stop! Mark! I'll shoot out the tire. Mark, you all right? Yes, Inspector. Oh, fine. fire the minute she smashed. Turned over five times. I counted them. What a mess. What a mess. Well, there's nothing we can do for them now. Oh, poor devil. Even if they were guilty of murder, that's a horrible way to die. And now, back to Glenn Langan for the conclusion of... 
mystery is my hobby. Now, Bart, would you please tell us what this is all about? Before we all went off on that moving picture chase, I thought that you thought that Max Warner's killing was an accident. Oh, I'm surprised that you, Inspector. You should have seen the minute we walked in that cabin that it had to be murder. You mean you knew it all the time? Certainly. How? Well, the way I see it, Inspector, Steve Morgan and Joe Warner came down here with the express purpose of killing Joe's husband, Max. Your meditation, huh? Mm-hmm. How do you figure that out? Because of the fact that Steve unloaded his brown copper before Max was murdered. Say, uh, what would you suggest is the best fly this time of year, Charlie? McGinty, best fly for the spring. Good. Tell me more, Bart. Hmm? Oh, more. Well, Inspector, on the night of the murder, Steve invited Max over to his cabin to look at a rare coin. And Max came still thinking the good old Steve was his pal. When he got there, Steve simply pulled out his automatic and shot Max. Dead. So you uh, think of McGinty as a fly to use, Charlie, eh? Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. If what you say happened, how about the light? Max wouldn't come into a dark cabin if he was just on a visit. But the cabin wasn't dark, Inspector, not when Max arrived. It was, too. We saw him turn on the light when we were running over here. Well, now, Inspector, if Steve could turn on the light, he could also turn it off, couldn't he? Well, he... Uh... You forgot that we were in the room here with Charlie Ames when we heard the shots. It would have been a very simple thing for Steve to turn off the light before we could run to the door. Charlie, hmm? what weight leader would you suggest? Oh, about ten pounds. <laughs> Seems to me that's all theory. You haven't any evidence that would stand up in court. I could think up a pretty story, too. About ten pounds, you say, Charlie. Hmm? Yeah, Look, think... Bart, how did you know it was murder? All right, Inspector. All right. How many shots does a forty-five automatic hold? Seven. Mm-hmm. That is, seven in the clip could hold eight if there was one in the chamber. And how many shots did we hear? Seven. Then I could safely say that there wasn't an extra shot in the chamber, couldn't I, Inspector? Inasmuch as the gun was completely emptied when you took it away from Steve? Yes, you could safely say that. And so could I. Thank you. And how many holes were in the floor of Steve's cabin, Inspector? Seven. And how many in Max's neck? Uh, one. And where did that one come from? Why, the... The one in the chamber. Ah, that we couldn't safely say there was one in the chamber, could we, Inspector? Oh, no. <laughs> I think I'll borrow that amphibious jeep of yours, if you don't mind, Charlie, tomorrow. Where no. did the ace bullet come from? Hmm? Oh, there wasn't any ace bullet, Inspector. Well, then how, how... That's how I knew that Steve Morgan was lying. You remember that Steve said he was awakened by a prowler who stood between Steve's bed and the window that couldn't be opened because it was nailed shut. Yeah, he said that all right. Steve swears that he shot at the prowler's head, which was silhouetted against that window. The shot's going through Max's neck. Yeah, that's right. Then where is the hole in the window, Inspector? If the bullet went through Max's neck, there would have to be a hole in the window. Bullets do make holes, you know. Well, I'll be... No, 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 don't say it, Inspector. There's more to come. When Max came in that night, Steve knocked him down and shot him on the floor. Yeah. Then he emptied his gun. There were seven bullet holes on the floor and one in Max's neck. Uh-huh. That bullet, you see, making two holes. Then he turned off the light, waited until he heard us coming, and turned it on again. He uh, wasn't very clever, Inspector. No, he wasn't very clever at all. Yeah. You know, Mr. Drake, that killing reminds me of the time that Harry the Hatchet was stopped in here. Oh, Terrible fellow, Harry the Hatchet. Why, one night, he started chopping up people. Started with cabin number 15. Well, sir, he hacked his way all the way down to the cabin. No, 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 no. That's enough, Charlie. Your stories are too obvious. What do you mean, obvious? Obvious fabrications. Nothing subtle. In other words, Charlie, they're just plain, bare-faced whoppers. Well, holy boxes of bear meat. I like intrigue, Charlie. After all, you know... Mystery is my hobby. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>